we wanted to show off our new invention. This is our, our hail simulator right here. Now, over the last number of years, I've heard time and again from farmers across southern Alberta that they'd really like to know what to do with their crops in the event of a hail. And I think earlier Mike Harding had mentioned that in corn, once you have a hail, that damaged tissue ends up becoming a vector for a bacterial disease called Goss's wilt. So then farmers will spray a fungicide to help the crop deal with that. Now in other crops like canola, wheat, peas and such, there are products being used out there. In fact, there are even products that are labeled as hail rescue products. So these are different blends of fungicides and nutrients and micronutrients and the whole nine yards. And the problem is, is nobody really knows do any of these work. Now it becomes a really difficult thing to study because as soon as you have a hail event, you've kind of lost the opportunity to have a proper check because everything's hailed. I want to know is that crop responding because of the hail or not. So we felt it was really important to develop a simulator to do that. Now we've been working with AITF again out of Vegreville. Ralph Lang has been working with um, AFSE for a number of years in actually training adjusters on evaluating hail damage. So in this sense, they've played around with everything from throwing rocks at it from a grain truck to snipping it with scissors and such, but they found that a dog chain worked really well at simulating damage. So then I, I'm, I'm pretty lazy, so I made an automatic dog chain. And we just took a risk in having this manufactured because, you know, the focus in other parts of the world, like especially in the United States, there's a fair bit of hail study that's been done. It's always been projectile based. And I thought, why do I want to simulate hail when really all I care about is simulating the damage? As it turns out, this thing works really well. And we had the lead adjuster out here from Southern Alberta and said, you know what, this is, this is as close to hail as we need. So I think we've got the simulator down pat and that's what this first year of the project that was funded by the Pulse Commission was based on, was developing the simulator. Next year we're gonna do research trials where we look at you know, the timing of the hail and different applications of treatments to rescue it. So fungicides, nutrients, and, I'm, and just before we were talking about plant growth regulators, that may actually play a role because right after a hail damage, the crop is producing ethylene. And ethylene is what triggers the crop to go to produce seed yield. It says, I'm stressed, I need to produce uh, a, a seed. Well, if it's early in the season, maybe we don't want the crop to do that. Maybe we want to slow it down and allow it time to, to grow. Behind us here is a canola trial that was, again, I got a lot of last minute funding for trials this year, but this one was basically funded by AFSC and wanted us to look at how well does canola recover from hail. A lot of the data that they use is on old varieties and such. So what we've done behind us is, for, for us, we used our hail simulator. Up at Vegreville, they still do it by hand with a dog chain. So they had a little more work than we did. But we looked at the rosette timing. Um, what were our stages? Somebody with me flowering. Um, basically one week after for four times. So we went 20% uh, flower, 80% flower, right up to the end of flowering, up to 21 days after flowering. And then we tried to simulate a damage of 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% damage. And now we'll look at this. There may be impacts on diseases, you never know, but we wanna see how do these recover and how does it yield. So we'll take a quick look at some of the plots if you don't mind. So right here on this plot, this was the first simulated hail that we did on July 3rd. And it was just before it was starting to bolt basically. This was our 25% damage. Yeah, our 50% damage, 75, and 100. We still have a crop here, eh? When we damaged it, there was no crop. So canola is absolutely amazing at its ability to recover from hail damage. So what stage of the crop was this in when it healed? Right before bolting. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you can look here what we did to that plant. It was basically chopped right off. There's nothing left it's still regrowing. Now we talk about any disease issues. Well, that's something that we'd like to study whether this 
physical damage now becomes a vector for sclerotinia. We're not, you know, obviously this year has been a pretty tough year to actually get disease infestations, but you know, if it is under different environments, you know, the weather after a hail is probably going to be important as well. So basically we were finding the more we think about this, the more questions we come up with. So uh, it'll be interesting to study this going forward. So Ken, there was no treatments on this? This one is not about the treatments, no. This one was more about understanding how well the crop can recover at different stages of hail. So as we move forward, the, the timing of the damage becomes later. So here, this was a 25% damage a week later on July 10th. And at this point, we're probably 20% flower or so. We did a 50% damage, 75 and 100. So it is pretty amazing how one week's difference in hail can make that much of a difference even on the 100% damage side of things. And this did get, this was irrigated. Kind of yeah, there's irrigated. been some irrigation here for sure. So then we'll take it another week, 25% damage. So now this is July 20th. What is it today? 30th. 30th. So this was 10 days ago. Obviously our opportunity to recover. This is still recovered. Right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. You can. Yes, sir. Do you have an untreated with no hail damage? Yes, absolutely. So yeah. You guys think that a little bit of hail early on gets them to spur the plant on? Yeah. But, hmm. Yeah, you've, I've heard that as well. No, and every this is actually six replicates in this mm -hmm. trial, and there is untreated, no hail damage as well. So now you can kind of imagine what we've done here. Next year, well, not in canola because they didn't fund the project, but we'll see. On peas, dry beans, and faba beans, we'll be studying effects of fungicides and growth regulators and such. We may see if there's an opportunity for other crops to get on board, but for next year it'll be pulses only. Now I've heard a lot of anecdotal results of headline after, on peas after a hail that can be very beneficial. So I'm curious to find out, is it just a story or is it real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll help with the disease, yeah. That's right, yeah. So then our last treatments were done to July 24th, which is only six days ago, right? So we're probably getting late on our chances of recovery. But that's what they wanted for treatment, so we did it. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions?